Welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation for today goes to a review of the presidential candidates uh, gearing up for the 2023 uh, elections. Uh, about 48 hours ago, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, former governor of Lagos State, um, of course shared that he had spoken with President Muhammadu Buhari and shared his intentions to run for the seat of president. And just yesterday, Governor of Ebonyi State, David Omahi, made a similar statement. Uh, we're going to be having a conversation, you know, across, you know, those uh, perspectives and, of course, even more. This morning, we're speaking with uh, Ibrahim Oshinowo, who's a former member of APC presidential campaign. Good morning, Ms. Oshinowo. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, my dear brother. Good morning, the house, and good morning, viewers. Thanks for joining us. We also have Gide Johnson, who's the chief lecturer at Nigerian Institute of uh, Journalism. Thank you for joining us, Gide Johnson. Good morning. Good morning to our viewers on the world. Good morning to have to you. Mr. Oshinawa. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Um, I'm going to start with, um, before we get into the, you know, concrete discussions, let's, you know, get this question across board for both of you. When Bola Ahmed Tinubu, of course, in one of the statements that he made, or is, you know, quoted as saying, saying that he wants to continue from where President Buhari um, has uh, left off. He wants to continue with uh, the president's legacy. Um, what exactly does he mean? I'll start with Mr. Oshinowo, if you can respond to that before Jude Johnson uh, you know, goes on. So what exactly does he mean by that? Uh, okay, good morning once again. Um, I would congratulate um, Nigerians for um, hopeful and um, um, declared his intention to leave that tree. Um, I try to mix a lot by uh, himself to serve this country at this very crucial time. Despite the fact that, you know, President Bari has done a lot in terms of development, in terms of strategic leadership, in terms of security, and many more. And I should you, what he actually meant by that is, uh, you know, will be showcased in the, you know, in the forthcoming, you know, um, declaration, Ashwajo will declare to Nigerians at the proper time in the very near future is going to address, set his agenda, uh, declare his intention to Nigerians, apart from President, who is President Commander in Chief of our country and a party and a party leader. He will still address Nigeria because the ball stops at the door, steps of ordinary Nigerians who are listening to us. So the declaration, what you have to by that, I will keep you to guess that, or you'll probably keep you in suspense so that uh, when we let the cat out of the bag, you'll be able to see uh, what actually meant by that. But generally speaking, I can tell you for free that, you know, it's a good day for Nigeria meant so well in terms of increasing the present security potential of the country, increasing the global economic crisis that, you know, increasing the present, you know, solution to the global economic crisis that President Biden is trying to solve, including, you know, extending what he has done in Lagos State to the national, you know, government. So a lot of things that he meant about that. But I'm not going to speak for him right now. But our declaration is going to come. It's going to come on. It's going to announce to Nigeria when it's going to be there. And you journalists and every other stakeholder in this country will be definitely invited. I will invite I will invite um, I will invite you personally and my dear brother at the other side. All right. uh, the, the lecturer invite him to so that declaration can be sorted out and questions can be posed to him on national issue, on domestic issue, its agenda, its love for this country. Nobody can, you know, take that away from Mr. Adi. He loves this country. He has built so many people, including, you know, the ambassadors, the president, vice president, and so so many other people that he told us in their success. A lot is coming right, up, but he's not a showcase. Yeah, yeah. So let, let's have G.D. Johnson also respond, you know, to the same question. You know, when uh, the when Ashwaju says he wants to continue with President Buhari's legacy and continue for where he stopped and some of all of that, um, before, of course, also mentioning that it has been his lifelong ambition to be president of Nigeria. Uh, G.D. Johnson, you know, what do you think that that means? I've seen people say that that sounds like a threat. Well, as far as I'm concerned, everyone is free to aspire to any post. That's the fundamental right that God has given to you. 
and the concern has provided for as long as you don't have any criminal code against you, you need to aspire to be to the highest office. I, 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 I think every Nigerian should aspire to become president of, of, of Nigeria. So that's his aspiration. That's his desire. However, I'm looking at what he said concerning that he's going to make a declaration to Nigeria, he has already declared. They use the platform of the national, uh, the platform of the state house to make that declaration. Uh, what, what other declaration are we waiting for? He has gone to see the president. I don't know whether um, it is the president that will have uh, that will determine um, who will become the president. And the governor, of, like you said earlier, the governor of Ebony State went yesterday, he went on Monday uh, to see the president. Um, if it's democratic governance that will practice, I think that they should make their, their aspirations and um, their visions for Nigeria. As far as I'm concerned, the president only has one. It is Nigerian without the time who become their president. And the president belongs to, to the political party they belong to. However, it's Nigerian that will decide whether they are ready to go along with that party or they are not ready to go along with that party. With respect to him continuing the legacy of um, President Mohamed Bari, yeah, which will be very, very interesting. Mr. Oshino has said, or not Oshino has said that he's going to invite us and so that we can ask questions that I want to ask because I want to know the legacy that um, he wants to continue about is it the insecurity that we have in Nigeria is it the economic crisis that we have in Nigeria is it the various form of taxation that has been and levies that have been imposed that has imposed every burden on Nigerians in the last six years if he wants to continue with that and if Nigerians in their own wisdom think that they want to continue with that well it's, it's left for Nigerians to continue with that but uh, on the last point um, he, he went ahead to tell us his life lifelong ambition as far as I'm concerned, when the coast is clear, when this presidential candidate comes out, what we are going to ask them is their vision for Nigeria, not about their ambition. We have seen people that have aspired to become president just for it to be on record that they are president for Nigeria, nothing to show for it. I think moving forward in 2023, what would you ask the candidates that are providing themselves to be the, what's your vision beyond your ambition? What's your vision for Nigeria? What's, what, what are you bringing to bear? On the an average Nigerian citizen, what are you going to do for Nigeria to take Nigeria forward? And that those are the things that right. the questions that we are going to ask me that I have a lifelong application or not. Right. Okay, so so um, I, also to just add in there, I'm also thinking that you know we need to move beyond the question of what the vision is and ask how we they intend to achieve this because over time we've seen several statements. I will do this. I will sort the economy out. I will give, you know, 200 million people a job. But the question is, how do you intend to do that? We need to be able to see, you know, the plan step by step, you know, quarter by quarter and day by day as possible on how they intend to achieve all of this. Uh, but let's come to Ibrahim Oshiwono. Uh, what are the chances of the, um, I mean, what are the chances of Bola Ahmed Tinubu becoming the flag bearer of the APC? Now, looking at the political a rancor that's going on, all of the tussle in the APC. And the fact that you have all the persons in the APC that also have interest of becoming, you know, the president. So what are the chances that he will become, you know, the flag bearer of the APC? Okay, um, thank you very much for that question. Um, you know, the problem... Uh, Oh, Ms. Oshino, we seem to have lost you there. Can you hear us clearly? Okay, maybe we'll probably just, uh, you know, move the question to G.D. Johnson. G.D. Johnson, can you hear me? So the question is, do you think that, you know, uh, Bola Agma Tinubu stands a chance of becoming the flag bearer of the All Progressive Congress as regards the 2023 presidential election, looking at all of the issues? with the APC at this point in well, time, then, and all of the contending interests? Now, well, if you look at political antecedents, the network of this political network, and then um, the, the financial muscle which he has, and the, the political leverage which he has built over over the years, he has chances, he has his chances as, 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 as getting the ticket. However, if you look at the Nigerian political landscape, it is beyond having the resources. And I recall in 1978 when Abiola aspired to become to become the president of the National Party of Nigeria. I knew how it ended for for for, for Abiola. And from a historical point of view, 
and um, we have always had reluctant president. It's not usually the the, the leading candidates are usually emerged as 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 the presidential candidate. I can go down to memory lane. In 1978, uh, um, um, Shagari wanted to be a senator. Shagari wanted to be a senator. In 1999, Obasanjo was not even interested in presidency. It was trust on him. And in 1993, Abiola did not have any aspiration of becoming president. 1990, the, of becoming the president until all the presidential candidates were banned and the parties had to look for new candidates. That's how Abiola, Abiola emerged from nowhere to get the SDP, the SDP, the SDP ticket. If you look at um, 2007, um, Jadua was not interested in the presidency. 2011, Jonathan was not interested. In 2000 and um, 11, Gwari wept and said he's not going to contest the presidency again. That's the end of it. Until they went to look for him in 2015. So he checked from his political point of view, the person that actually gets the presidential ticket of the party and the person that actually wins the election are usually reluctant president and not usually the leading the leading candidate that that you have. Whether um whether actually you be able to break that jinx is, is there for us to see. However, if you look at APC, and I'm going to, if you look at APC, the dynamics of the APC, APC is going to have its convention this year. In their convention this year, they're going to, go to have presidential primary this year. How are they going to manage those two, those two major party, um, party functions? I, 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 I don't know, and I hope they'll be able to, because the party that will win the 2023 general election is the party that comes out of its presidential primaries with less crisis that is able to manage the party that wins the presidential presidential election. So his chances in APC is is high. However, the dynamics and the murky waters of politics is is, is beyond having the resources, is beyond having the network, is beyond having the leverage and thinking that well I have the leverage, I have the network and I have the resources to muzzle that. In Nigeria, the Nigerian presidential Ticket and presidents, pre president has never shown that history. History is working against him in actual sense. But I hope, um, let's see whether it will be the jinx breaker like you have in Kano with them. Mm. Okay, with so the present governor of Kano that won the second. All right, so I think. And in your state with Lado Jada, I think I'll be that one second time against all odds. Yeah. All right, so let's bring in yeah. uh, Ibrahim Mushuono at this point in time. If you can hear me. Uh, what are the chances that Bola Akhmad Tinubu uh, will, you know, become the flag bearer of the APC? Oh, okay. Um, uh, let me let me just quickly make this especially clear that you know uh, I won't be able to make some you know few you know points concerning you know um, actually those chances you know becoming the candidate of our party. Like what my job rightly said there. He has all it takes, you know, he has all the prerequisites to be the leading candidate. And of course, ele e elections, you know, elections is about, ele you know, winning an election for a party is also contributing or factors of you nominating a credible candidate, candidate across across all board from the north, central, northeast, northwest. Of course, actually, I has that. But I will a little bit be cautious because a lot of people are still going to come out you know, to context, you can see the governor David Mayo of the Boeing State was there yesterday. Who knows today who's going to come out next to context? Who knows who's going to come out? And I can tell you for free that few people, few governors, you know, former governors are still coming, going to come out, declare their intentions to the president from the southwest, from the south south, and the southeast as well. So the the parameters for you know making a final judgment on who becomes a party candidate right now. Of course, it's not really going to be substantiative. What, we can, what I can say for now, based on my experience, what my dear brother on the other side said, uh, Abiola, Abiola, of course, had been long. If you remember in 1983, he actually wanted to do context and election. In 1993, he has formed his own group and aspired. That's why Hope 1993 is able to defeat all of them with his vision, with his experience in private sector, you know, coming into financial um acumen and all the things so i should do as all these things is well prepared but we can't actually consider uh, you know give a final fact or ticket on who is going to clinch the ticket right now let all the candidates he has you know he's you know he, he has also set the pace for who wants to come out now you are free to come out showcase i'm calling on also governor fire me who is also uh you know you know you know 
probably partially intending to contest for the office of president. He's a PhD holder. Why not? Let's see people like that coming out, showing their intentions. Then at the appropriate time, we'll be able to bring out the cards on the table that who is going to be this, who is going to be that, what are the chances for A, B, C. Comparing Ashley with David Umayin right now, I don't think it's appropriate in terms of, you know, performance in terms of even political structure, in terms of even networking. Of course, you know Ashwadu, of course, definitely is on on, 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 on should nine to ten. You understand? So I would like to keep few, you know, aims right now until we see other other you know candidates coming out. Um before Mr. now Mr. I think free, we see a lot of candidates snowballing out. Yes, please. Mr. Shinawa, um um, is Ashwaju's um, ambition and, you know, the idea of him running for president, is that, you know, would you describe that as a way that the APC can hold on to power or what is actually best for Nigeria's next eight years? You know, you know, holding on to power does not depend on any political party. It's, 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 it's ordinary Nigerians. You and I will determine. You know, it's a matter of number. It's a game of number. Nothing more. Who will determine who is who, who is going to be the president? You know, don't forget that after nomination from each, each parties, you know, you're still going to go to Nigerian people, tell them what your intentions are. If they are convinced, they will vote for you. If they are not, they will vote for the other side. So it's ordinary Nigeria. You and I will determine who will continue to lead. Of course, the present government has done its best and still doing, and at least credibly well, I can say that the government, based on the circumstances and, you know, you know, global pandemic, you know, economic factor and the rest of it that so, so, so affects this government. Yeah, but the but government is th this is what I'm asking. Mr. Shinawa, you, you would expect that the political party that truly loves Nigeria will put its best mm -hmm. foot forward, either yeah. because they want to win the election or because they truly want to see a person that will move Nigeria to, you know, a better place. So mm -hmm. would you say, you know, from what you've seen, that Bola Metinubu might be the APC's best foot or best candidate? Absolutely. Absolutely. No doubt about that. He has, he has the network. He has, he has touched so many lives. You know, he has the, you know, background. He has the history of performance. Lagos is a very, you know, coastal metropolitan, metropolitan state. So it's very hard to, if you can manage Lagos the way he did as, at, at the time, you know, you can imagine, you know, for a, for your allocation to be hold, held on for so, almost about two years, and you were able to pay salaries, you were able to do so many infrastructure, set up, you know, paste. Environmental in 1999 in Lagos was a mess. Everywhere was a mess. It was a mess. He is able to, you know, revive so many things in terms of investment, raise the IGR from just mega 800 million to 32 billion every month. And turn around so many things in Lagos State. So if he's able to do that, and it has not been in office in almost about 12 or 13 years now, or more than since 2007, he has not he has not held any political offices. He was offered so many, so many, so many, um, so many, so many opportunities to, you know. He said no. They would like to see Nigeria grow, and he will always love to build so many young talent. And that's what he has been doing. So from the north, south, west, he has the network. He has the political appeal. He has the voting attraction. So if our party nominates him, why not? He's, he's a good candidate. But of course. The party determines who flag his ticket, and whatever the party at the end of the day does, that's what, as a loyal party man, that's what we are going to, you know, you know, work with. And we, are, I trust the judgment of uh, uh, Governor Bonin and Paraventure, right. anybody yeah. that comes in as the party chairman, Gide Johnson the and will support our candidates win the election. Yeah. Gide Johnson, do you agree that the APC is putting his best foot forward? You know, in the person of um, Bola Metinubu. And of course, Mr. Shino was a well, analysis, yes. you know, yeah, that yeah. he has helped a lot of people, and he has yes, you know, a good that network. My my bro my brother is from my my my, my, my part of, of 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 the world is from my part of Nigeria. There's a particular thing in a local dialect that um, the day you throw your hat in the ring to contest an election, that's when you know the death that killed your grandfather, and then you know whether somebody has gone mad in your family. And some of the hidden secrets that you never knew about come to the fore. It's interesting when we, this election comes into focus. And because we ask questions, some of us were family question, true and true. And people tend to use Lagos as a case study. 
I don't know what Lagos they are talking about. There is Jack on the Lagos, Ostinubu, Fashola, Ambody, and there's some Olu's Lagos. We put all these records to, to, to bear because people will just bandy some certain things and they will say, only fools argue with fools. The evidence of what they've done with quarter of century with Lagos would be what we used to serve as a test case in asking them question whether they are the best for Nigeria or not. If what they have done in the last 25 years for a quarter of century in Lagos, if it's good in not for Lagos, then we see whether it's good enough for Nigeria. So we ask questions beyond we have made people, we have done this, this is IGR, this is all of that, this is all of that. All of those basic questions we ask, we ask, we ask that whether it's the best candidate. Like he said earlier, there are other candidates at the point. At as I'm concerned, and I like his word view when he said that fire should come out. I see nothing reason I see I see no reason why the vice president shouldn't also come out. I haven't done 20 years in public service at 12 years as attorney general of the federation and the vice president for the last for the last eight years so i think the vice president Yemir Shibadi, should throw his hat in the ring let Nigeria decide let the space be open so that as many people that will come then the party will decide who is their best candidate if you ask me for a fact that who is the best candidate based on what we have he has said it. Tinubu has not done anything since 2007 after he left as the governor of Lagos State. And so, judging by that credential, you you agree with me that Yemi Oshibadu has a better credential than Bola Ahmed Tinubu, except we would want, except we want to argue with proofs, except we want to argue with evidence. It's, it's clear. If, usually, judging by that, who has been involved in public governance, who has risen to the point of a vice president, to the president for eight years. So, that's that's my view concerning that. But let more candidates come up. Let people throw the let them throw their hat in the ring and let the party members of APC decide who should be the best candidate that will fly their flag against other flag bearers of other, other party. But okay, we'll uh, uh, I'm so sorry, sorry. The, the, the next uh, Ibrahim Oshun, um, Ibrahim, can you please um, just hold on for a bit? I'm coming to you now. But just to add, you know, I was hoping that uh, uh, G D Johnson would have answered that the question of whether it's uh, enough, I mean, it's okay to use the template of Lagos, you know, to judge the 36 states of the Federation, including the FCT, talking about, you know, different ethnic groups and different persons, uh, resources naturally, I mean, differently and down, and all the peculiar issues that we're faced with. So the constant reference to the Lagos template and the Lagos experience, using it to judge the entire country, I really don't know if that would actually work, no, no, no. because Lagos is Lagos, and we're talking about the 36 states now. Uh, that, that, that's number one. Lagos that's on the one. That, that's that's number. It can't be mini Nigeria. Lagos is a state in Nigeria. We understand that it's a very vast city. We understand the economic viability and what have you. But you can't use Lagos as one state to want to say because you actually made progress in Lagos. It means you will make progress in the, talking about the entire states of the Federation. But that's on the one hand. The other question now for you, uh, now. Mr. Ibrahim, is do you think that the president is fit? Because recently we have President Mohamed Buhari asking, saying that it's, I mean, the work of the president is tiring. And looking at his age, you want to also tell that, I mean, he's really tired. It, it can be so much. We've also had issues of, you know, health challenges with uh, Bola Ahmed Tenebu. So do you think that he's physically fit, he's strong enough to, to, to be the president of Nigeria? Now, quickly, let me quickly address what my dear friend and brother said, Mr. Jide. Look, I'm a Lagosian too. You know, Lagos is not London. Lagos is Lagos. We are all around when, you know, he became the governor of Lagos State. Let me tell you something about Ashraju. You know, is you know, a lot of people envy him. And you know, it happens the way you go. When you are when you have what others does not have, you know, Ashwadu is a special being. It's very rare. It's very rare. Among his colleagues that were governor in 1999, none of them as of today pull the cloud or have the influx tenacity that he has as at this moment. None of them. Go and check them. From 1999 to date, most of the, his colleagues are ministers, senators at the point, still they have no capacity that he possesses. So there's element of jealousy, you know, everywhere for him. I can understand that. People, even in your community, when you do something exceptional, when you, are, you have ideas, when you have what it takes to make things around, when you have what it takes, do what other cannot do. You develop some natural enmity. Even with your closest family, it happens like that. So Ashwadu should Ashwadu knows that. He knows that. You know, I'm not saying he's a perfect man. He has his flaws. I'm saying he's on the national TV. He has his flaws. 
But for now, in Lagos, I can tell you that what he has done in Lagos is, for now, no record. In this country, no governors of his age, his caliber, some of his colleagues, none of them can match his status. And that's naturally, yes, for me. Now, let's go back to what Mr. Gide said about, you know, what he has done. When the campaign comes, as I said it earlier, he's going to come out and tell you his agenda. I'm not going to say that for him. He's the one that wants to, I mean, I'm not jealous of him. Office of President is not a joke. He's not a child's play. He knows what is at stake. He has, you know, he's a leader in this country. He's not in Lagos State alone. There is no way to be actually where you step his foot in Nigeria, in Africa, that nobody or hundreds or thousands of people will not gather to recognize him. That's what they call politics. That's politics. So he's having enemy in Lagos. Some I will say he's not a negotiator. Some will say it's this. Some will say it's that. That is politics. Okay, so, 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 so let's have you share your thoughts on the second question. Let's have you share your thoughts on the second question for the want of time. Let me finish, please. Hold on, hold on. Let me, please, let me finish. Let me finish, please. It's ready for that. We are prepared for the election. The ele this is election year. We are, we are set for it. Now, actually, what you're talking about is it. I don't know what, you know, a media needs to help in this. You know, I, I said it probably on the air. It's Somebody is not doing what you expect him to do. You term that as medically unfit. How do you know somebody is medically unfit? It's the medical record that will determine. He went to London recently on a knee cap surgery. Does that mean he's not fit? It doesn't mean he's not fit. You can be in your forties, you can be in your fifties, and you have medical challenge. That's not. That's not. That's not. That doesn't mean that you are not fit for office. But when the time comes, like I said, then they will post questions to him. And I can tell you, he's ready to answer all necessary questions because he asked for it. He said he wants to leave this country. So he knows what is. But Mr. Adine, most of your questions and many other negotiations and Nigerians who want to ask questions, they should be patient. When he declares, set up his agenda, then you can query that. You query it, and the campaign council will respond appropriately. We need your vote. We want to, yeah. apart from the first party primary, we are still coming to Nigerians who have the final say and final approval on who is going to become the president of this country. So oh, it's very small. easy. Lagos, for instance, most of the GDP, Lagos GDP is more than, is higher more than in so many African countries. I can mention and mention many African countries that the GDP of Lagos is, Lagos is a country. To lead Lagos is not a joke. It's not a child's play. So that's why you're leading that. And till now, after leaving office in 27, 2007, till now, no, none of his age mates who are governors can say, okay, I can match this guy's plan. So let's wait. You will still get a lot of things to hear from him. Like you said, Professor Yemi Oshibadu, it's his product. I'm saying it boldly. It's his product. And if Professor Yemi wants to contest, it's our dear brother. Who is the product of the agenda right now? Hold on, hold on, hold on, uh, Mr. Oshinawa. Um, because of time, let's also go to Jide Johnson uh, to, of course, uh, have his uh, thoughts out there. Yeah, yeah, and something I'll also quickly mention is, um, you know, you just mentioned that he went he went to London. That that already has set a bad precedent for a person who is trying to be president of Nigeria. We've complained over and over about President Mohamed Bari going to the UK for medical treatment. Um, Bola Metinubu did not fix any healthcare in Lagos good enough for him to receive treatment here in Lagos that he loves so much. He still goes to London for medical treatment. And that already, you know, should be a red flag to any Nigerian. Um, uh, Jide Johnson, quickly um, share your thoughts to, just before we wrap up. In Lagos, the Irish planning to as a country, they couldn't put the health sector in place for him to receive health, 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 health treatment in Lagos. As far as I'm concerned, I have no threat for Ashwaju. I have an admiration for his political sagacity, no doubt about that. I may not approve of some style and approach to, 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 to governance and politics, to politics. But when 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 it's time, like I said, we surely we surely we surely ask and ask those questions. And when people are saying that oh, Tinubu made this, Tinubu made this, Tinubu made that, Tinubu did not make anybody. It's it's it let us it's let us if Oshibajo did not perform creditably well as an attorney general, would he use him for the second term? Would he recommend him for the third term? Would he recommend him for um for for the fourth? It's like people say, oh, okay, they are very leaders, made Tinubu. 
or somebody meet somebody or Barry meet somebody. Nobody can make anybody. And some of these things that people use in the political landscape is insulting and degrading. The fact that I worked under you or you recommended me for a post, if I'm not good enough, you would recommend me. So it's a symbiotic relationship. You contribute to me, I contribute to you. And that's the way I see it in the political, in the political, in the political, in the political landscape. As far as my colleague has said, he said Lagos is like a country. And we have said it. They said, oh, there are no people that um, have his political. No doubt about that. No doubt that across with the set of 1999 governors, some of them are still in charge nationally. And I've said it over time on national TV that the major problem we have with our fourth republic is the, is the class of the governors, the class of the governors that we have had in 1999. And all these people, they come out. I tell them, when the time comes, we ask them to come out, to come out with the code of conduct they rule from the field in 1999. The form they filled as the asset declaration. That's the one we ask for when it comes to that. Because moving this nation forward is beyond using rhetorics and playing on sentiment. Oh, we build this person. We make Lagos to be a Dorado. We make Lagos to be this. Or uh, we make people. We have made ambassador. We don't need that. What we need is someone that will turn Nigeria around. When was United Arab Emirates? When was it established as a country? These people go to London for medical medical facilities. When was it like that? It was not like that before. The king of Saudi Arabia used to come to university college or speak to in the pardon. Same for Luth here in Nigeria. So we want a turnaround in Nigeria. Beyond personality, we want to talk about policies. We are tired of personality. And when people talk about personalities, they gloss over public policies. And it is policies that shape the life of people. So I'm not interested in talking about personality. What are their policies? And we'll ask. And we'll situate their policies of what they have done, their antecedent. All right, Judy Johnson. You know that? The antecedent to see what they will do for us in the future. Those are the questions we are going to ask. All we right. are going to ask them questions. All right. Uh, we would have With to, respect um, to what um, they have uh, done, when uh, they have opportunity, and what they will do for Nigeria. Absolutely. Judy Johnson, we'll have to wrap up here. Um, Ibrahim Moshino, uh, we you know, always enjoy speaking with you. Judy Johnson, same also. Uh, thank you both for speaking with us this morning. And as, of course, we inch uh, closer and closer to the elections, we would love to have another conversation with both of you. Have a really, really great day ahead. Thank you. All right. Uh, stay with us. Uh, we're moving away from politics now to talk healthcare. There's a, a seeming surge in the Lassa fever cases and fatalities here in Nigeria. And that's what we're getting into next uh, here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa.